I don't know if I don't, I don't know if I'm feeling y'all energy or not. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> Rob Hills. <laughs> Rob Hills. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Here, here's the here's the uh, 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 um, word of the day. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. Read that one more time. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. All right. So y'all can stop my time. So if you want to, so if you, you, you know, so your actions dictate who you want to be. So when you leave here today and you, and, you know, the stuff that you do that tells, okay, me and most, most of all tells yourself and the world what you want to be. You got to take, tell them I got to take the right actions. I know people go to church and they're going to put $5 in the altar and say they're going to be millionaires. Nope, you're going to be a five in there. Well, maybe a 5,000 there if he bless you a thousand fold. 5,000 there, you're going to be a thousand there. It don't work that way. You got to work. You have to do something. You have to put in the time. Faith without works is dead. Whatever you want to do. All right, so part two, part two. We started this series down in our Gaston um, uh, campus on, on, on last Sunday. Praise God. And they are here and uh, watching. Amen. So um, overcoming the fear of failure. Part two. We're going to talk about today. Overcoming the fear of failure. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. 2 Corinthians, the seventh, the fourth chapter, excuse me. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 7 through 12. We'll read our New American Standard Bible. Uh, okay. Uh, they probably have it on the screen in a second. All right. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen containers. So that, the ex so that the extraordinary greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. Now let me just stop. You have a, you have a treasure inside of you. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, you, you, you got treasure in you. Yes. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's in you. Here's what it says then. We are afflicted in every way. Mm. But not crushed. Perplexed. But not despairing. Persecuted. But not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying around in the body the dying of Jesus. So that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who live are constantly being handed over to death because of Jesus. So that the life of Jesus may, be, may also be revealed in our mortal flesh. So death works in us but life in you. So it says here that we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, okay, but not destroyed, always carrying around in the body of the dying of Jesus. We will fail. We do fall down. Don't McClurk said, but we get up. Yeah, yeah. And we do. We do. We, we, we absolutely do. And I know people, people you know, came against Dunning when he wrote this song. You know, and I'm just saying this assembly who got up. But, but the bottom line is, is that we are going to fail. We have to overcome the fear of failure. Okay? Failure is omission of, a, of an expected action. Okay? Failure is, is, is lack of success at a particular time in your life. All right? And many people have not overcame the fear of failure. And the fear of failure will paralyze you. I did part one last week. We'll do part two this, the, the, the day. I want to just do a quick review, you know, because many people are living beneath the God-given pri uh, privileges because of the fear of failure. They have not overcame the fear of failure, right? F and, and, and many people walk in failure in a way of perception and not reality. You know, you're fearing the boogeyman in the closet when, it, when it's just, okay, a suit that's hung up. You know, you, you, you're fearing uh, people, you know, ghosts and goblins, uh, you know, when, 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 when it's just your house settling. It ain't Grandma, Le uh, Granddaddy Leroy or Grandma Sally or not, it ain't none of that stuff. Not at all. But your mind is playing tricks on you. And when the devil have you, your mind playing tricks on you, and you don't understand failure, and you are fearful of any type of failure, you will not maximize your potential. 
right here, okay, people I'm talking to here and around the world, is so many people who, who are so afraid to fail, they're going to die with inventions inside of them. They're going to die, okay, with business inside of them. They're going to die with books inside of them. They're going to die with prosperity inside of them because they are afraid to step out of me failing. What people going to say? Well, I don't care what they say. We don't care what people say. One of the greatest deliverance we need is a people deliverance. That we deliver from people. You know, some of you, uh, I'm, finna, I'm finna go home. I'm, I'm coming home on you. Okay, I'm coming home on you. Uh, you know, uh, even uh, people, here, here's, a, here's a fear of failure that we got to overcome and it affects our other parts of our life, even in flying. I, I used to tell my mom, and, and she don't really uh, mess with me too much anymore. And she, she, she used to ask me, and she's sitting right there, and um, she said, when you get to so-and-so place, I, uh, uh, make sure you text me. Let me know you made it safely. And I understood that. And one day I told her, I said, Mama, when, when I drive from Huntsville to the Cater, you, that's when I need to be texting you. <laughs> now we laugh, but that's the truth. Yep. So whenever, see, flying is the safest mode of travel ever. Whenever you fly, we you know you, you have a one, one in one hundred thousandth of one percent chance of dying. I'm going to tell you what that percentage is. Point zero, 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 one, four. That is your chance of dying on a plane. Point zero, zero, zero. Zero, one, four. That is your chances of dying on a plane. A sold out 727 jet would have to crash every day of the week with no survivors to equal the highway deaths per year in this country. Have to crash every day of the week. Every day for 365 days a week, a full 747 plane to equal the deaths. You, okay, but the, but, but, but the fear of failure that the plane is going to fail because you are living in perception. Now, some of you say, I don't care what you say, Doc. I ain't getting on no plane. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you knowledge. You want to be ignorant? Go ahead. I say it just like that. Now, here's the problem. Now, 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 I'm not knocking you. You're only on a plane. That's, that's all good. Go on, drive and, 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 and risk your life. I am much afraid of driving than I am flying ever. Because my chances is slim to none. If, if, if people put, if, if the news covered all the deaths that happen every single day of people driving, you would not get in your car. But when you don't overcome, now I'm going somewhere with this. I'm not just messing with people who don't like to fly. You don't like to fly? We cool. I still love you. I, I'll meet you in four hours, five hours in California. You'll see me in two days. But we'll have a good time when you get there. No problem. We'll have a good time when you get there. No problem. No problem. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. I'm going to give you knowledge though. But, but what happens is, I'm going somewhere, is that we take that same fear of failure and we appropriate it in every space in our life. And some of you say, well, I, I, it's not that I'm afraid. I just haven't did it. And right, exactly. And how many other things we just haven't done? God is trying to bless us, but we just haven't done it because we have not overcame the fear of failure. He's trying to bless you. He says, start a business, but you have the fear of failure. Okay, what if, what if I lose everything? Well, learn from it. Because 80 to 90 percent of all self-made millionaires, okay, have been bankrupt before. So learn from it. Do not be afraid to fall, jump. You're going to get skinned up. You may get hurt. It's all right, okay, but you got to overcome that fear of failure. Are y'all hearing me? We win or we learn, we never fail. See, you must realize that your philosophy of life and how life is played out, okay, plays in every part of your life. Most people don't compartmentalize that. It's in every phase of your life. So now God's word is saying, come up hither, and you say, oh, God, hither. 
I can't go up there. They're on this, this, this lake uh, called Jerusalem, or Sea of Galilee, as you know it. And they out there, and, um, and, and, and they out there fishing, and um, they see somebody on the water. And they're like, oh, is that somebody? And, then, and it, it, was, it was Jesus. And, and here's what he said. He said, he's Peter, he said come to me. Now, everybody want to knock Peter. Well, everybody want to knock Peter. But Peter was the only one of the apostles that got out the boat. Outside of Jesus Christ, I have never read, read anywhere recorded that a man had buoyancy and walked on water. But everybody wants to about Peter drowning when he saw the waves and stuff come. Oh, yeah, he did. But he got out the boat and spit splash to Jesus. And the Bible never says he swam back to the boat. He, amen, we believe it's insinuated in the scripture that, amen, after he got himself together, he walked back to the boat. On the water. But you want God to bless you. God, I'm trying to. But, but I got to get you over your fear of failure. Now, now here's the deal. Don't y'all, don't y'all get mad at me. Tell somebody, don't get mad at me. Some of the fear of failure you have because you was brought up in a fear of failure environment. Ninety percent of the people are products of their environment. If you grew up in an environment of poverty, you'll think poverty. You grew up in an environment of fear, you'll be fearful. You grew up in an environment, in an environment of pessimism, you'll be pretty pessimistic. Yeah. Only that one percent, no matter where they at, they're gonna rise to the top. Yeah. Okay, okay, that ten percent I should say, gonna rise to the top, right? Um, so, 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 if you was brought up in an area, in a, in an environment that they did not overcome the fear of failure, then I don't care how much you come to church, I don't care how much you shout. I don't care how much you dance. I don't care how much oil we pour on your head. If you don't do the proper things through the scripture to overcome that fear, then you just going to be an oily, fearful Christian. Go have oil on you, but you're still going to be scared. And God going to say, go here, and you're going to say no. And then you're going to run around a lot of other chickens who are fearful people, and they're going to tell you, I wouldn't do that, girl. Man, I wouldn't go there. Some of y'all already got your story for George. George, are you sure? Because you scared. And one thing I don't do, I don't let other people put their fear on me. Anybody who's been around me know, I, I, listen, I'll push it back on you. Matter of fact, I'll call you out. Don't put that on me. Amen. I know it's on you. Don't put it on me. And see, that, that cripple you from being all God have you to be. Because you're afraid to fall. Hello, don't be afraid to fall. Matter of fact, failure is part, is, is part of you winning. Are y'all still with me? So I want to get, uh, talk about five insights on overcoming the fear of failure. Five insights of overcoming the fear of failure. I talked about number one last week, and I, so I, I won't talk about it long today. Uh, fear of failure, first insight is fear of failure comes from the lack of faith. And I talked about that last week, you know. Um, in the 10, the 10 in, in Numbers the 13th chapter, I just referenced that, you don't have to put that up. Numbers the 13th uh, chapter, you know, Moses told the 10 spies to, I mean, uh, the 12 spies to go and see, seek out the land of, of, the, of, of the promised land, and only uh, two came back, Joshua and Caleb, with a good report. The other ones were fearful. They said, we see the giants, the sons of Anak are there. We, 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 we look like grasshoppers, God never called them grasshoppers. See, see when, when you have not overcome the fear of failure, you will call yourself a grasshopper. You will call yourself defeated before anybody else calls you defeated. You you'll walk around saying, you know what, I'm scared. You, uh, I can't do this, or, or you know, I'm, I'm, I, I ain't smart enough. I, I, I ain't pretty enough. I ain't tall enough. I ain't fat enough. I ain't, you know, I'm, I'm, my feet too small. My feet too big. I mean, you'll make up a whole lot of excuses. Not to overcome and be what God called you to be. Give your neighbor a high five and say, you awesome. Yeah, and they are. But if you don't overcome fear, then guess what? Awesomeness would never come out of you. Awesomeness would never come out of you. See, you got, you, you got, you, you got to be, you, you got to have enough faith in God that if you fall on your face, God still is God. Right? But I tell people, just keep going to bed, get up in the morning, you're going to see what I'm saying, right? And I say that because there are going to be some failures along the way, but you're going to win the war. You're going to win the war. There's nobody who's ever been successful that did not have some failures. 
You can't be a fearful of those failures, even if, you know, if, if you fall flat on your face. Anybody have fell flat on their face before besides me? Right. But can I say this? I would not. I, I didn't like it. It didn't feel good. I didn't want to be in it. But today, I would not trade anything for it. I praise God. I fell flat on my face. I learned more. See, you learn more through trials and tribulations and failure than you ever do through victory. You celebrate in victory. You learn through pain. Are y'all, y'all ain't ready. You learn through pain. You see? So, 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 so this first insight is, is that it comes from lack of faith. You got to trust God. And you got to trust what God has said and what he want to do for you and without wavering. You, you know, you, you're doubting in your mind. James said you don't get anything. The book of James said uh, a man who doubts in his mind, they, you know, waver. You don't, you don't get anything. You get no promises from God. Are, are, are you following me? And so now you got to condition your mind to overcome those things that scare you. And guess what? We all have things that scare us, that, 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 that we may fail at. Right? There's a chance you, is there a chance I'm going to die? And some things? Yeah. Spiritually and physically. Yeah. That don't mean you stop. I ain't going outside. They said folks out there robbing people. Well, what you going to do? Let's stay in, stay in the house for the rest of your life? That doesn't make any sense. Don't you trust God? You know, if, if, because if, 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 Dr. if Dr. Arjun and I had not overcome the fear of failure, then, I, then our middle child definitely wouldn't be doing what she's doing right now. Teaching in, in the inner city of, of, of Memphis and shooting is happening down the street. <laughs> Maybe, as a matter of fact, that's the first, uh, that's the first developed neighborhood in, in, in the history of the United States of America. Or is this from it? Orange Mound. Orange Mound is, a num- is, a num- is the first neighborhood ever created in the history of the United States of America. And it's pretty, it's pretty tough right now. But, 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 but here's the deal. Are we concerned sometimes? Oh, yeah. But we got faith in God. She's on a mission. She's doing a, that's a calling. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But because we have so much fear of failure, we'll send somebody else's child out there, okay, to help the world. But we won't send our own child. But yet we want the world help. Y'all ain't ready for this. A- amen. I'm sure Dr. King, uh, mom and dad, uh, we did not enjoy him dying, okay, at an early age. Now, I ain't looking for nobody to die. That ain't what I'm saying, praise God. Okay, that, that ain't what I'm calling it. But what I'm saying is, is that you got you to gotta risk something. Yeah. I'm not saying you got to risk your life, but some, but some of you may have a calling that you have to risk your life. Yeah. I've risked my life many, many times traveling around the world. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. Hey, praise God. Didn't flinch it at all, praise God. Why? Because I, I trust God. You, you, see, see, people will bluff you out of your blessing. Fearful people who don't trust God will say, don't do it. You're going to lose all your money. You ain't got but 20000 anyway. There ain't a bunch of money. Lose it all, praise God, to try to do something great. Somebody said, 20000 shoot Doug. Doc, ain't got but three. What you talking about? Well, three. Somebody said, I ain't got three. I got 300. What, 300? So I ain't got three, I ain't got 30. 30! I ain't got 30, I got three. Three! I ain't got three, I got 30 cents. 30 cents! 30 cents. Yeah, why, why, why? Because God's trying to get something to you, praise God. And you got to understand that your faith got to bring you above fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Failure is part of the process. So go ahead and get o- and overcome your fear of failure. It's going to be all right. Did you make it last time? Are you here today? You here today? It didn't kill you. If it didn't kill you, it's meant to build you. What don't kill you is meant to build you. What don't kill you is meant to build you. I've been in situations and around people and I was absolutely fearful. Fearful, I, 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 I don't have the background they have. Don't have the insight they have. What am I going to say? When raised up in this atmosphere. Are y'all following me? But you got to go ahead anyway. You're going to fail. 
Now, this is simple. Keep playing. I fell at the table one day. I was eating lunch at a business lunch. High profile people around the table in the natural. They brought my food out. Where I'm from, when they bring your food out, you eat. But not in the business community. And I'm, they brought my food out. And I went in. Heard the Holy Ghost say, look up. <laughs> Daniel, you know what I'm saying. I looked up. I'm the only person that was on, well, one more person. They had learned before I did. They looked like me. I looked up and everybody was waiting on everybody's place to be served. They didn't say nothing to me. I felt like this. Put my plate, put my fork down, eased it back down. Put my, put my hands back like everybody else. After everybody got their meal, God said, everybody got their meal. Yeah, we can eat. I walked away from there saying, man, I got all these degrees. I've been all around the world, but I failed at etiquette at a table. You're going to fail sometimes. You're going to look like an idiot sometimes. But you got to learn. Because some of y'all right now are saying, I ain't know that. I just told you. So don't you do that. Because we grew up when they when, when the food is after after rail free. We go around the table, everybody say they prayers. Bible verse. We mad when somebody say Jesus wept because they took our verse. Bless the Father Purit Hall, for they shall see God. You know, you know. Under that father and that mother. We go all around the table. And then somebody get your scripture. You got my scripture. We get kind of mad. Right? Get the rail. Rail blesses the fruit. After the after food, the flesh, I don't know who don't, don't have their flesh. I don't care who don't have their food. Maybe they're not gonna eat. When the when the blessing is pronounced, it's time to get down. It's time to eat. But not so in every you have to learn to embrace the pain of failure to gain the joy of success looking unto Jesus the author in our faith who for the joy set before him despised the shame now sit the right hand and see, see, the problem is that you, you, you're afraid of the pain of failure. But you got to overcome that. Because when you start to overcome that, you start to overcome your insecurities. We all have some. Some of us have them better than others. You start to overcome your insecurities, so then you can start to go forward in God. See, no amount of service or church can 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 push you to where you need to be if you don't embrace the teaching. Go ahead and fail. Get skin up. God got something for you. Learn from your pain. Learn from your wounds. You think we where we at today because we didn't fail? Yes, we fail. Time and time and time again. A righteous man falls seven times in a day. A righteous person. Continue a righteous person and get back up. 
Just because ain't you fell down, you need to overcome the fear of failure. I know you messed up that on that pro, on that situation last time. That does not mean that God don't want you to do it again. That that it's not there to teach you a lesson not to do it again. It's there to give you strength that the next time that joker show up, the next time that problem show up, the next time that opportunity show up, you are not afraid to fail. You have learned and you will do it again and again. If you gotta fail a thousand times, like Colonel Sanders. A thousand nine and eight times, God may want to bless you in a thousand and eight times. Go ahead and learn from every single no, every single I told you so, every single okay, you shouldn't did it. Go ahead and learn from it because God trying to get something to you. Glory to God. Are there any winners in the house today? Okay. See, God will put you in a space that he knows you're going to fail. Lady, he knows you're going to bust your face because he's trying to teach you something. So that's what Doc, that contradict what the Bible said, there's no failure in God. Okay, let me go back to the scripture. Struck down, but not destroyed. It doesn't mean you won't have some failures along the way. But final failure, you'll never see. Final failure, you'll never see. Perplexed, I'm out of my mind. I'm going crazy. Oh, Lord, but not in despair. Not at all. Because you're going to overcome what you're going through. It's okay to be nervous sometimes. It's a natural thing. I've, I, 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 I've, I've spoken in places and there have been a big room of people that I don't know that do not look like me, okay? I have never spoken to them before and there's a sense of nervousness I always have every single time and I teach all the time. Okay, I look in the mirror most time I go in the bathroom, okay? I look in the mirror, I say, Doc, you finna Doc Rock them. They get, they get Doc Rock. I text somebody, oh, I think y'all, I mean, this past weekend, I said they getting ready to get Doc Rocked in Kansas City and they got Doc Rocked in Kansas City. But I get myself together and then, and then I say, God, I trust you. What comes out of this mouth, I trust you that it will be good for them, good for their mind, good for their spirit, good for their soul, good for them going forward. We all, we all have a level of nervousness and fear. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing it anyway. Courage is not the absence of fear, it's doing it anyway. It's going up to the Goliath, even though you're afraid of Goliath, and say, I got a rock that's going to bust your head. Some of you, man, I'm trying to teach you, but the, some of you got, some of you have Goliaths, and you are afraid to go out there in the Elon Valley and fight that big joker. He's tall, he's mean, he talks a bunch of crap, and you're afraid. you still in the camp. Get yourself out the camp and meet that joker out there. Yes, he's big, but you got a rock, baby. You got the rock of God. You got the rod of God. You got a rock. You overcome your fear of failure. You're not going to fail. You're going to overcome. Thanks be to God who always calls us a triumph. In Christ Jesus. Lord have mercy. Okay. I suppose we take it easy today. <laughs> Glory to God. So I said, Doc, why you why you teach I teach from the I teach from my toes all the way to the top of my head. You know, why I, you know why I teach like this? Because I'm trying my best to give you something that I know 
that will change your life. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about tradition. I'm trying to give you something that I know, CJ, without a doubt, that will take you out of darkness into light. I'm trying to give you something that will take you from the bottom to the top. I'm trying to give you something that will deliver you from every ill and pain you ever had. I'm trying to give it to you. I know it works because it worked for me. Praise God, it's working for me. I'm working it out right now. And I'm overcoming every fear I have with every failure because God got something for me. And I'm trying to give to you. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Glory to his name. You got to overcome that pain, that doubt, that stuff that was in your environment that's been around you for years. After a while, you got to tell, you got to tell darkness, get yourself some light. Okay, number two, let me, y'all be seen, let me, let me try to finish this. Please, number two, I got five to go, y'all. Hallelujah. Number two. Nothing to fear, the, the, the second insight for the next ten minutes. Nothing to fear, for the Lord never fails. The second insight is, nothing to fear, for the Lord never fails. The Bible says, you can put this up, 2 Corinthians is 12th chapter, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. Now let me say this before I go there. Remember when we had Rosh Hashanah last, last Sunday, right? It's a new year. Can I tell you this? New opportunities should be knocking on some of y'all doors. Can I ask, can I, can I just get a, uh, just you say hallelujah, anybody had any type of new opportunity in any kind of way since last Sunday? Look, 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 I'm saying, yeah, several. And guess what? It's getting ready to happen to a lot of them. Y'all ain't ready. I'm just trying to tell you. But you can't be afraid of it. Because it looks like work. Or it looks like it's big. Big is in you. Big is in you. You're serving a big God. Okay, let me read this. Dr. Arden is singing. I can, I can hear mother. I, I, when I was preaching real hard, or she thought all the time, mother be like, oh, just, she's like, I thought you'd own this kid. Oh, yeah. My mother used to say, she didn't fear anything. No, she really didn't. The Bible says in verse 9, but he answered me, my grace is always more than enough for you. And my power finds its full expression through your weaknesses. Did y'all pull up this out? We're going to put that up in just a minute. Y'all put that up. But he answered me, my grace is always more than enough. And my power finds its full expression through your weaknesses. So I will celebrate my weaknesses. For when I am weak, I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. Y'all can meet that. Hello, how you doing? So I'm not defeated by my weaknesses, but delighted. For when I feel my weakness and endure mistreatment, when I'm surrounded with troubles on every side and face persecution because of my love for Christ, I am made yet stronger. For my weakness becomes a portal to God's power. Y'all see that? Nothing to fear, for God never fails. See, so you ain't got to worry about your weaknesses and, and, and failure, because when that happens, it becomes a portal 
and I taught this before, of God's power, meaning an interest rate, an interest rate, rate to, in, to come into. Not an exit, but an interest. Right? See, and so you are afraid of something you shouldn't be afraid of. Your weakness is an opportunity for God to show up. Your failure is his strength. Your failure is his strength. Say it one more time. Your can you, your failure, my failure, is his strength. Go ahead. Be weak. The world told you, you, you no, you don't have no weakness. Yeah, go ahead and be weak so he can make you strong so the world thinks that you're strong when you know outside of God you're really weak. See, people trying to be be built up themselves. No, no, I'm weak. I can't do this without God. But with God, you better get out of my way. With God, you better, you better get out of my way. With God, amen, there's no, there's no stopping me. And there's no stopping you. If you can embrace it. But you got to be, because you got to embrace it. Uh, there have been many times, cousin, did, we did things back in the past, because we used to be with be us, and we're like, uh-uh, we don't know, we'll see what happens. We didn't, we didn't know how to do it. Let's try stuff. We weren't scared. We did it. See, you can't, he is going to show up. Let's go to Numbers, next chapter, uh, next verse. I'm not done. I'm going to have a look, a few things for y'all to snack on before you go get your me real meal. The fellowship. Let you go home. Go get my Sunday nap. Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he will lie. Nor a son, nor a son of man that he will change his mind. He has said, and he would. Has he not? Ha, has he said, and he would not do it? Or has he spoken and would not make it good? God's not a man; he can lie. Verse nineteen. That's thirteen, y'all. Numbers twenty-three and nineteen. Y'all listen to me. Don't pay no attention to that. Thank you, Woodsboro. Pay no attention to the man. Corner, pay no attention. <laughs> Number 23 and 19. Let me read it again. God is not a man that he would lie, nor a son of man that he would change his mind. Has he said and he would not do it? Or has he spoken and he would not make it good? So here's the deal. God, God, there's no failure in God. If he said it, he's gonna make it good. He cannot lie. He's not a man that he would lie. I mean, a man will lie to you. God won't lie. What has God told you that you are afraid to do right now? What are some of the things God has spoken to you that he would do for you, John, that you haven't done? He won't lie. He would not lie. But you got to believe it. Bruce, you got to trust it. Because if he said it, it's going to come to pass. Maybe it's not going to come to pass in your time. But his time is perfect. You never want God to give you a blessing before you're ready. It will hurt you. How many of you have made something happen? God told you you're going to do it, but you made it happen. And it ended up being a, almost a curse. I know I have. I mean, you made it happen, you felt it, you, know, you, had, you had people who was carnal who said, go ahead, I believe it's God. They ain't prayed, they ain't heard God, they ain't did nothing. They had wanted for, so they could brag. It ain't up hurting you. It ain't up hurting you. But God's a man, he's going to lie. If he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. One more scripture, and, and I'm done. I'm done. Let's go to Numbers. Now, let's go to Matthew 19 and 26. 
Matthew 19 and 26. And we're done. But for today, Matthew 19 and 26. Is, is this helping you any? Matthew 19 and 26 says, Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Humanly, from a human standpoint, yeah, it's impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Don't worry about failure because God won't fail. It's possible. It's possible in God. Here's the deal. You got to have God. God works through the gifts he's given you. It's not your gift. Quit claiming something that's not yours. I know you're talking to the world. You may have to say, you know, I have a talent. But acknowledge, at least it's in your mind, that this gift is from God. It's not your gift. God gave it to you. And, and things will be possible because you use them. But you have to overcome the fear of failure. Let's grip the world. Let's grip the body. Let's grip even, even uh, uh, ethnicities and, 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 and groups of people. I can never ever see that. Now you, now, you can't just do anything. You can do, you can do everything that God has given you the gift to do and the permission. I, I, listen, I wish I, I wish I could be an NBA player. I wish I could, but I just, I'm just not fast enough. My, my jumper wasn't good enough. You know, I went quick enough. I wish I could have played in, in the NFL. I had, I had a lot of interceptions my senior year, all that, but you know, I weighed a buck 25 and you know, 35 and, and, and ankle weights soaking wet. You just can't, but whatever God told you that you can do. You absolutely can do it. Overcome the fear of failure. We'll do part three next week. We've got a lot more stuff to get in. We're just getting started. Tell somebody, we're just getting started. After this series, I hope that you will, you will, you will look at your opportunities. And you'll look them in the face. And say, if God be for me, who can be against me? They may be laughing at you right now. Let them laugh. They may be talking about you right now. Let them talk. They may be, they may be saying that you would never be whatever. Let them say it. You just keep doing what God told you to do. They may have counted you out, but God has already counted you in and put you in the story. Baby, you in the story. You are in the book. They may have erased your name, but God has put you in the book and we get ready to read your chapter. We on chapter 5, but your name is in chapter 6. We get ready to chapter praise because your name is in the next chapter. You just keep going forward. You just keep doing what God told you and we get ready to read your name. We get ready to shout your name. We get ready to shout you. Yes, Lord. Tell your neighbor, say, just keep reading the books. Now tell your neighbor, my name gonna show up. Daniel, my name gonna show up. Just keep reading the book, and you're gonna see, you're gonna see what the watchers can do. And through God, you're gonna see. Stand to your feet if you can. Stand to your feet. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. Lord, we bless your name. There's none like it. As my father who's sitting in the audience would say, Lord, we've done what you asked us to do, yet there's room for much, much more. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We win because he won on Calvary. He won when he got up out that grave. He won when he ascended on high. We don't have to fear anything. He's already showed us the way. If you're here today or watching 
and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if, if you was to die right now, you know you wouldn't go to heaven. But you want Jesus. You want God. I invite you to give your life to Christ. The Bible says in Romans 10 now, if you confess your mouth to the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So Father God, just repeat after me those, those people, persons, maybe you listen to this around me, in your car, wherever. And Father God, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. I believe in your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. I believe he died on Calvary's cross. I believe he was resurrected on the third day. Now, Father God, thank you for coming into my life and saving me. You're saved. We'd love to have you here. We'd love to uh, carry you through the ritual of baptism, sy symbolic of you dying and being resurrected. We'd we'll love to do that. We're, we're going to have a baptism uh, here soon. I uh, announced that soon. We've uh, got several people that need to be baptized. Some will be uh, baptized. Uh, so we're going to be announcing that here in the next couple coming Sundays. Amen. We'll have a good time. Praise God. A good celebration. Maybe you want to join this ministry. Amen. Yeah. Maybe you want to join this ministry. You are welcome to join. We want you to go to our website. Those who are here and got saved, amen. Go out to our, our Connect Center. Amen. Patricia will be out there uh, working. Up. Those who want to be saved, those who want to join the ministry. We love you. But most of all, God loves you. Amen. And you got the Holy Spirit with you. Just want to one, one la, la, uh, uh, thank God for our uh, Hospitality ministry. Uh, Vivian is heading up. By the way, uh, Vivian uh, will be, uh, be uh, assuming the responsibility as our church administrator. Working with uh, under Dr. Audra in administration and all. Uh, Katina Wally is going to be working with us in administration coming up. Amen. And she said yes. We got all the details, but she trusts me. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, and also, um, I call it happy money, but your event is going to be happening uh, in our fitness ministry doing some things uh, along the way. Amen. Hallelujah. God is, God, God is, God, 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 God is, God is great. Amen. These people, people involved. Hallelujah. Uh, so, so praise God. One other thing, and then uh, we to see when come to do tithes and offerings. Um, our, we call it the dock out, outside there. Uh, it's about ready. We, we got some uh, umbrellas and stuff we got to order uh, that should be coming in. And we'll be having some uh, activities and events out there. If you haven't been out there, I hope that they unlock that door. Make sure the door is unlocked so you'll see somebody and uh, you can look out there. And uh, it's getting fall time. We're going to have some fire pits going to be out there. We're going to have some lights going to be out there. Uh, we're going to have the ability to put uh, 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 video out, out there. We got a little stage out there. Some of y'all probably never seen out here. And uh, so we can have youth events, we can have young adult events, have older adults events. <laughs> uh, uh, what, whatever, praise God. And uh, so it's going to be really, really, really awesome uh, once, once, once it's done, praise God. So, Pastor C, come on. Amen. We love you. Amen.